Good morning, everybody. Hello and welcome to today's Fronius webinar with the topic of the Fronius Taro Echo, our cost optimized commercial inverter. I want to kindly welcome you today um, for this very, very special topic. So today we'll, we will have a close look into the Fronius Taro Echo, which is our new hero in the commercial inverter sector. I want to quickly introduce you to the team for today. So I will guide you through today's webinar. So my name is Köl Sandro. I am from the trainings team at Fronius International at the headquarters in Austria, in Wales. And on the other end of the line, there is today my colleague, which is Christoph Schillinger. So Chris will take over the chat for today and he will answer your questions. So please feel free also during the webinar to just type in any questions and Chris uh, will provide you immediate response to it. And also afterwards, uh, he will quickly join live uh, and uh, point out the most interesting questions for us all. Okay, so what do I have provided for you today? And that's the agenda of the webinar. So webinar will take approximately 30 to 35 minutes. And I have subdivided it into two major parts. So on the one hand, uh, I will talk about product features and options of the Fronius Tauro Echo. It means some hard facts and uh, also what different system designs are possible. I also pointed out uh, AC daisy chaining, that's the AC innovation of the Fronius Tauro Echo and also the Tauro configurator as well as the service and support. The other half of the webinar will cover use cases. That means uh, I will make a comparison of different system layouts. You know, uh, the Fronius Tauro uh, is a very, very robust and flexible inverter, and therefore you can use it uh, for different application examples. Uh, that's also something I will point out in the second part. Okay, generally said, uh, what are the requirements for the commercial in inverter uh, nowadays? So um, just your introduction and to give you an overall picture over the commercial inverter at Fronius. So we really looked on these key points you can see in here. So we wanted to build and invent a very robust device, a solid device, which can withstand harshest conditions, but it also should, of course, be smart uh, and be up to date and also be very, very interconnectable and also very flexible. That means uh, when inventing the Fronius Tauro, we re really looked also on flexibility. That means that you can use it for different system topologies, for system, different system designs. So that is also a, a key part or a key innovation of the Fronius Tauro. And after all, of course, the most important point when it comes to commercial PV installation is, of course, the cost efficiency uh, we wanted to invent uh, with the Fronius Tauro, uh, a very, very cost efficient uh, device. We especially focused on the BOS costs, that means the balance of system costs, which I will show you later on within the presentations, how you can save to the greatest extent. And that's the Fronius Taro Echo. So hard shell, smart core. That's more or less the slogan of the Fronius Taro series. And we kind of packed all these uh, functions and features within one device. And this is uh, our new player in the commercial sector, the Fronius Tauro. The Fronius Tauro Echo, I can give you very, very positive news on that. So it's available now. So we officially launched the Fronius Tauro Echo. It's available, available since calendar week 21 in the power classes 50, 99 and 100 kilowatts. The Fronius Tower Echo has got an MPPT voltage range from 580 to 940 volts and 
Adaptive Echo device is equipped with one MPP tracker. The maximum input current range is of course depending on the device, uh, on the power class you have chosen, uh, 78.5 uh, amps for the 50 kilowatt device and 175 amps for the 100 uh, kilowatt device. The maximum PV generator you can connect to the Fronius Taro Echo is 150%. That means over dimensioning is as usual also possible with the Fronius Tauro Echo. One thing maybe to the power classes I want to add, you see here we also have got a 99 kilowatt device that's uh, um, in fact the same as the 100 kilowatt device from a hardware perspective. It's only from the software side limited down because there are some regulations of grid operators that add uh, 100 kilowatts in some regions there are specific regulations uh, and therefore to uh, avoid here any inconveniences uh, we have got this uh, 99 kilowatt device also in our program uh, just for your explanation. That's the Fronius Tower Echo and it's out now and there will also come another Fronius Tower unit. Uh, so you see we have got uh, one product series with two different devices. So the e Tower Echo is already out and the Tower Standard will follow in a few weeks. That means um, this is then um, the product with three uh, MPP trackers and in the power class of 50 kilowatts with an MPPT voltage range from 400 to 870 volts. So this will follow in the upcoming weeks. What are the variants of the Fronius Tauro Echo? So we really wanted to focus on tailor-made system solutions. Therefore, you will all the time, if you uh, take a closer look at the Fronius Tauro Echo, also find uh, a letter behind so it will be a whether p or a d option that means the fronius taro echo p stands for pre-combined and that's all the time referred to the design topology you can see here um, that's uh, i would say a basic scheme of a pre-combined uh, design topology so we have a central system design the inverter are located uh, closer to the transformer station and that's the Tauro P. Of course, there are differences in the DC connection area because therefore we work with DC combiner boxes and we have got a higher cable cross sections on the DC side of up to 95 square millimeters. The other one is the Fronius Tauro Echo D variant. That's uh, the direct option and that also that stands um, that the Tauro Echo Direct uh, is sitting directly behind the module field. You can see it here. So that the strings uh, of the PV generator are directly connected to the Fronius Tauro Echo and that's for decentral system design. I think that's uh, easy to remember. D stands for direct Tauro and decentral system design where the, uh, the inverters are located decentralized uh, in the module field. So that's uh, principally important to consider. What are now the differences? Uh, I already triggered them a little bit. Uh, so you see here the DC connection areas. So that would be the central system design, that would be the pre-combined variant. So um, therefore it would be possible to realize DC cabling up to 95 square millimeters um, and AC, AC cabling up to 204 square millimeters. We have got integrated weak lamps, that means uh, the pre-combined variant works uh, together with uh, DC string combiner boxes. Uh, and then, of course, you have got higher cable cross sections, uh, which you can connect to those uh, cable clamps, these inlets, and uh, right behind there are the weak clamps. That means you can directly connect the DC cable to the Toro. So no additional crimping, no additional uh, installation effort, just a direct connection 
uh, of the cable and that also makes it more convenient for you. The direct variant uh, you can see here, that's the decentral system design. Uh, on the bottom, we have got here all the MC4 connectors integrated. Again, on the AC side, it's uh, completely the same as for the pre-combined. Um, we can connect uh, AC uh, cable cross sections up to 240 square millimeters. And we have got integrated string fuses. Um, that means um, depending on the module you're choosing, you can um, order X factory from Fronius string fuses, uh, whether a 15 uh, ampere amps fuses or 20 amps fuses. So the amperage is freely selectable uh, and is depending of course on the model module type you're using. The AC options, so pre-combined and direct is always linked to the DC side of the inverter. When we come to the AC side, we have again three options. So you see here three pictures. Uh, it's all the time a Fronus Taro Echo Direct because we can easily see that on the uh, MC4 string connectors here. And the AC side is sitting right uh, here on the left. And therefore we have again three different options. We have got a single core uh, option, a multi-core option, which you can see here, and also our AC innovation, which is the AC daisy chaining. Uh, you see here two times the single core inlet, um, that would be the AC daisy chaining. Coming to the hard facts on the single core cable, we have got five separate single inlets. So just a normal single core cable uh, with 15 millimeters to 28 millimeters of uh, cable cross sections and M40 um, cable clamps. For the multi-core cable, we have got only one cable. So it's uh, one cable inlet because it's combined uh, in all single cables in this uh, multi-core cable. It's fitting from 16 square millimeters up to 61.4 mil square mil millimeters. Uh, and you've got one time the M32 uh, cable inlet here separately for the for an uh, grounding cable. And for the AC daisy chaining, we have got two times the single core variant. It means um, you can have in total 10 inlets. That means 10 times M32 single core cable, where you can interconnect multiple inverters and therefore again save on the BOS costs, save on cabling, save on AC disconnector switches and so on. I will come more into detail about the AC daisy chaining in a few seconds. Here is it already. So you see here uh, this AC daisy chaining function we have got in our Fronis Tower inverter. So that's uh, a completely new thing when it comes to um, this AC cabling. What's the intention about it? So you can interconnect multiple Tower inverters on the AC side, as you can see here on the drawing. Um, the maximum possible um, kilowatts uh, AC output power which you can interconnect is 200 kilowatt. That would be in total two times the 100 kilowatt Tower Echo or four times the 50 kilowatt Tower Echo or a mixture, for example, two times the 50 kilowatt and one times the 100 kilowatt device would also be possible. What is of course the big advantage of this AC daisy chaining option? You can save cabling because instead of going separately with each inverter to the transformator, you now go with one AC bus uh, interconnected to all inverters to the transformator um, and therefore you save um, a huge amount of cabling and also on other components like AC disconnector just need one here uh, right before the transformer station and um, also AC combiners can be saved. So this can provide you uh, a big saving potential which you can realize 
And you can also see here a small picture of our pre-series in Greece, where we already realized this AC daisy chaining option. You see here uh, how it looks like uh, in real world. So that would be the interconnection on the AC side, which um, it is quite good visible on this picture. Therefore, we see also again the Tauro direct with this um, daisy chaining uh, option. And one thing I also want to highlight here is the so-called Florex. So this is also an option you can order from Fronius. So you can directly install um, the Tauro with this Florex. So just uh, put them in on the sides of the Tauro and then uh, install it directly, uh, for example, on a rooftop or uh, on a ground mount system. Uh, and of course, this uh, is again a big advantage when it comes to installation time and uh, installation work savings, because the Tauro can also be exposed to direct sunlight, so you do not have to uh, make complex um, complex installation. But that's very very easy, and in the most easiest way, you just order this uh, so-called Florex. That's an accessory, uh, and uh, install it like you can see it here. Okay, so let's continue again with this AC daisy chaining. Uh, I, for your understanding, I just put in here some more slides here. So basically we can see here two, three different installations. So one installation example would be with an AC combiner. So again, an additional equipment you would be in use uh, if you do it like this uh, and then go from the AC combiner to the transformator. Without combiner box, you have got longer AC cabling like you can see here on the principal scheme. And with the uh, AC daisy chaining, I would say that's the most convenient way you can do it you just interconnect the Tauros and then go directly to the AC to the transformer station. And I think it's obvious if you combine these three options, you can really save um, costs uh, on additional equipment and also on cable lengths with this AC daisy chaining innovation. What's also standardized integrated in the Fronius Tauro Echo devices uh, is a integrated surge protective device. So we have got integrated as standard uh, a DC and AC SPT type 1 plus 2. So you can see here um, the opened device and here mounted on the DIN rail uh, in the upper part, we can see here uh, there are the DC and AC SPTs, so you do not need an additional box. You see you have got a lot of space within the inverter, so uh, very, very uh, good for the installation. And um, if you only require a DC SPT2, um, this is an option, so you can kind of make a downgrade uh, if only this is re required, but standardized integrated are DC and AC SPT type 1 plus 2. Of course, that's a, a high quality SPT, so it's replaceable. You see it here, you can just put it out uh, if, for example, there's a triggering and put it in again. And we have got a feedback contact on our data communication unit, which sits here. That means uh, if there is a triggering, is if there is an alert, if there is over voltage, uh, you will get immediate uh, information and a notification in your from your solar web portal and you can uh, react immediately and an exchange of course uh, is easily possible you do not need uh, for example exchange the entire device uh, the Tauro is uh, constructed to really have component exchange and also the DCSPTs can be exchanged on site Yes, for the Fronius Tauro Echo, uh, we have got one MPP tracker. So with one MPP tracker, you can also save BOS costs. So often there is not the necessity to have a multiple tracker device. Uh, for example, you can see this picture here. That's again the pre-series increase. 
you have got at all um, you have got only one direction. That means um, you have only uh, one yes one direction. And uh, also on the P, when it coming back to the POS costs with the with one MPP tracker, you of course do not need a separate uh, uh, over voltage protection devices. As you know, each MPPT has to be uh, equipped with uh, one SPT device. And of course, if you have got only one MPPT, uh, you only need one over voltage protection device. That's also um, an advantage because one SPT per MPPT is required. Of course, uh, in with a, with a high uh, MPP tracker range, um, there is of course uh, higher costs when it comes to installation in the devices because uh, it, at some points it comes more complex and in some points there is actually no necessity to have a multiple tracker device uh, and therefore you can also save uh, effectively costs if you make a correct system design. Uh, of course, if the site suits um, to the requirements, but uh, in fact, uh, that's often the case, like it's in the picture, uh, where one MPP tracker is, of course, more than sufficient and has got, of course, also its benefits. With the active cooling, uh, as you know from Fronius, we have also integrated it in our Fronius Tauro device. So we have got more yield with active cooling technology. We even took the active cooling to the next level. So uh, besides the inner fans uh, of the power electronics, we have got now also a so-called double wall concept with the Fronus Tauro Echo device, so which you can see here on the picture. So there is kind of a double layer, uh, and um, this also has got huge advantages because with this double wall insulation, you can really position the Tauro in direct sunlight. So exposure to direct sunlight is possible. And uh, this active double wall cooling is kind of um, providing uh, a stable cool temperature within the device, uh, which is approximately 13.5 kilogram uh, degrees Celsius less inside and due to this active cooling technology. We guarantee you a full performance uh, up to 50 degrees te ambient temperature. I think this is also very important when it comes to installation in hotter areas. Um, we have got the full performance and uh, no power rating. Uh, as we have a late power rating, we have got more yields. And that's also, of course, a big benefit because that also brings you, of course, money. And longer service life, of course, um, due to this active cooling, um, we have got an optimum um, protection of the components and the entire device itself. That means uh, we uh, have got longer service life. That means longer service life means less maintenance work. And of course, uh, again, this has got a positive impact on the return on investment. You see here again a picture um, that's kind of a technical drawing how this works here at Fronius. So we have got this uh, fan here, this uh, on the power stacks unit, which you can see here, and then the double wall uh, where all the excess heat. Um, so we suck in the cold ambient air and we give up the, the warm excess heat on the sides of the inverter. You see here, we made uh, advanced testing of the Tauro Echo. That's, uh, I really like this uh, test. That's an ASIC sun simulation test with our double wall concept. And uh, what you can see here, the blue bars uh, are kind of uh, temperature without direct irradiation. And the, the yellow bars are temperature with direct irradiation. And the big benefit of the uh, of the double wall concept is that the gap between direct uh, iteration and without direct iteration is rather low, and that's a positive sign 
that the double wall concept is, is working and we also did the same without the double wall concept and we saw the difference is really massive so we have a temperature difference of minus 13.5 uh, degrees celsius uh, which is a tested and proven technology our active double wall cooling Yes, one thing uh, I also want to highlight for today is the Tauro configurator. So you have seen we have got a lot of options. So I, sh I showed you before the centralized and the decentralized option with the P and the T Tauro, also with the fuses, SPDs, and also on the AC side. Uh, we tried to make it as easy as possible for you. And therefore we have got uh, created the Tauro configurator. Uh, it's uh, on our homepage and you can retrieve it via this link, tauroconfigurator.fronist.com. That's kind of a sales configurator, which I can uh, which I can recommend you. So you just have uh, a config configuration tool, click through it, and the outcome is your personal Tauro configuration. It means um, that's what you have chosen with all the all the serial numbers and all which you need of course for ordering and um, that's the outcome so it's a sales configurator uh, which should make your life more easier uh, if you uh, wanted to really make a custom project inverter uh, for your individual projects yes and one thing which is also very very important um, that's the less maintenance and service part. Uh, you know we have got a very innovative service concept with the Fronis Tauro. I have also prepared a video which uh, comes after this slide. So basically the Fronis Tauro consists of one or two power stacks. So depending whether it's a 50 kilowatt device or a 100 kilowatt device, it is equipped with one or two, um, two power stacks. And due to this uh, active cooling technology and also uh, due to this uh, power stack exchange, uh, we can really have less maintenance, I explained before. And in case of a service, of course, this makes it also more easier for you because uh, you do not have to exchange the entire inverter. You can make the replacement on site. Uh, one of these power stacks has got approximately uh, 25 to 27 kilograms and can be easily done by one person uh, but I think um, pictures are telling more than words uh, in the following slide I show you a video how did this power stage exchange is looking like and how the concept is done Yes, that was the, the power stage exchange of the Tauro, like you see, uh, very, very easy. I think uh, can be done within a few minutes. And that's also a key argument, of course, for the Fronius Tauro, this service topic, service in general for Fronius, very, very important. And we really had this concept service on site, no inverter exchange, and that's possible due to this power stage system. Okay, now coming to the second part of the presentation, which is the system layouts. Uh, I have just prepared some examples for you, which I want to show you what is possible with the Fronius Tower. So you see here a classical uh, commercial installation, commercial rooftop, uh, where you have got one uh, direction, 
means uh, we have got the inverters in this case are placed near the feed-in point. So in this option, we have got DC string combiners, which you can see here on the roof, and longer DC cabling and one centralized position. That means that would be a Toro Echo pre-combined. Uh, yes, uh, a classic example how it can be solved, for example. Another possible is a ground mount installation. Again, uh, you see here DC combiner boxes, uh, modules again looking into one direction. And again, one central place where all the inverters are installed. Uh, yes, uh, what's the big advantage, of course, uh, one all the inverters uh, at one place. Uh, that means you have got easy access and fast service possibility. Uh, uh, compared to a decentralized installation behind the modules where you have to move around the entire installation field. Another possibility would be here now, that's the opposite now how you can choose it. That's also possible with the Tauros. So you see here direct Tauros. Uh, so you keep the DC distances pretty low here uh, and go with longer AC cabling to the transformer station station. It means, of course, um, that's the advantages is you do not need additional DC combiner boxes and it's maybe uh, easier to plan. Uh, that would be, uh, I would say, the main advantages for the decentralized uh, option or the decentral installation. Again here, this would be one thing where you can also integrate the AC daisy chaining uh, so you see here now, uh, we have interconnected uh, one half uh, of the module field of each side with the another tower. You see here the black connection, that's the AC cabling. So that would be, for example, a classic example where you could save uh, a huge amount of AC cabling uh, because you limit it more or less to the half. You just interconnect the two towers and then go collect it uh, to the main transformer station. Yes, uh, and you keep the distances as short as possible. Also, a rooftop insulation can of course be realized with a decentral tower. That means uh, you see here, for example, uh, four towers uh, located on the rooftop uh, with uh, the AC cabling going down the wall uh, to the main transformer station, but that would also be possible. So you see, uh, with this uh, different system topologies, uh, it is uh, rather uh, really, really flexible uh, for your individual systems. And of course, combination of both are all the time possible. So you see here uh, a, a central installation with combiner boxes here, uh, a decentralized tower, and maybe on the other. Uh, end of the road or on the other side of the road, again, a central insulation with longer AC cabling, um, which you can see here, that's also possible uh, just for your general understanding. Yes, we already realized some very successful references in Austria. So that's an example from Carinthia in Austria. So that's a ground mount insulation at the runoff river power plant uh, and at this site 12 times the Tronus Taro Echo was installed in a direct installation as you can see it here uh, and um, a yearly yield of approximately 1500 of megawatt hours so um, the PV system is performing really really good so uh, above our expectations uh, and the feedback also from the installers was the installation was effortless. So uh, in this we really have a positive feedback on the pre-series. And also of course our solar web portal is free of charge uh, when purchasing a Fronius Tower. That means um, you can also kind of ramp it up for commercial applications. So that's uh, how the how this solar web looks like at this specific PV system with the Toro Echoes with this 1.3 megawatt peak. So you see here production consumption analysis uh, and also the current power. 
So, and much more views are of course possible that are just two screenshots which indicate you uh, the Fronius solo app. Yes, and uh, I've already come to an end, but I have also prepared another video for you, which I will show you at the very end. So uh, I hope I gave you a rough overview the last uh, 35 minutes about the Fronius Tauro Echo installation. We have got, of course, many, many further trainings and education measures on the Tauro. So just attend a Fronius online training where we have really also camera set up uh, a virtual hands-on experience for you. You can register for free on our homepage. We are also running on-site trainings near you. So as the situation uh, is getting in some parts of the world better, uh, there are also Fronius uh, offices, of course, maybe near you, which are providing uh, local lessons, face-to-face uh, -face trainings, and of course, just uh, stay up to date on our regular training schedule. Uh, much more information will, of course, come. But before I close, I will quickly hand over to Chris, my colleague. Uh, Chris, did we receive any questions during the webinar? Yeah, hello, uh, Sandro. Thank you very much. Uh, for the webinar and thank you guys for joining today. So actually right now we didn't got any questions so far, but of course there is still time. So if you have questions now, uh, don't hesitate and use the chat function to send them through. I want to use this, this second here now to, to answer a, a common question to all of our webinars. So this webinar is being recorded and will be sent out to you in the upcoming days together with the documentation, with the presentation that Sandro showed us today. So you will have the opportunity to look it up again once more and also to share it with your colleagues if you want. Uh, so yeah, so we will get in contact with you with the emails, uh, with the, the same email that you have registered for this event. Yeah, okay. I see no questions coming up so far. Um, we will just mute ourselves now and answer your questions uh, via typing, via chat, if you have any. And with this said, I want to hand back to Sandro for the final words. Yes, thanks, Chris. Also, uh, so like Chris says, we are still available for you a few minutes. Uh, I want to say thanks a lot for participating today. And the very last part, I have prepared you a very cool video for the Fronius Tower. So I want to close today's webinar with this video. So sit back one minute and enjoy. And this is the official Tower feature video.